Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Matt Lagore Show. I'm your host, Matt Lagore. I'm here with my very own show that I broadcast on the North Reading Public Access. Uh, my show is about being an entrepreneur. It's about business. It's about inspiration. It's about a lot of good things, uh, I think, because uh, th this day and age we live in, I think we have uh, so much bad news and so much stuff to upset us. I think maybe we just need to take a little break and have something that uh, will leave us feeling a little better, and that's where I come in. So uh, that's what I like to talk about during my show. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different, something I've never done before. Um, we're going to have uh, a green screen behind me, and we're going to have some different pictures coming through and rotating. It might be an utter failure, but one thing for sure is we're going to try something new because uh, I, last time um, I did the show, I watched it afterwards. Now, when I got ready to do the show, I said to myself, I looked in the mirror and I said, well, you look, I look good. I thought I was put together nice, you know, I thought I had a nice shirt on and my hair I thought was good. And then I watched the show and I looked terrible. I looked awful. And then to add insult to injury, halfway through the show, the, the most unthinkable thing happened. One of my buttons unbuttoned right around here on my stomach. And I didn't have a t-shirt on underneath, so you got to see my stomach. Now, we did the best we could to cover it up with graphics, but, you know, you, you, the, the, the ship had already sailed. It was, it was mortifying and horrifying, and I, I don't think I've ever quite been so embarrassed to have uh, myself publicly humiliated like that. But I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing because it teaches you a lesson. So I decided that uh, um, I would do something to distract uh, the, the, you from, from me. You'd see something behind me that would be more interesting than me. Because you know what happens as you get older, uh, you never think of yourself as anything but 25. You always, in your mind's eye, see yourself as 25. And when you see a picture of yourself in, in reality, in life, and what really is going on, um, it's not what, you, what, you, uh, what your mind thinks it is. So uh, we're going to try it. Uh, and let it, we'll see how it goes. So on today's show, I, you know, on my show in general, I like to have an interesting guest on, uh, preferably a business owner, an entrepreneur, uh, or somebody who's kind of doing something cool. And uh, today I'm going to have a guest on who is uh, doing something I think is cool, and they've added something to their community. Uh, my guest is going to be Mark Hall, and we're going to talk to him about his. Uh, his store that he has, Ryers Market, right in the center of North Reading. Uh, I think everybody in North Reading and surrounding towns knows what I'm talking about. So let's get started, and let's. Uh, I want to introduce you to my guest, Mark Hall. All right, Mark. So welcome to the show, Mark. I'm glad to have you here uh, today. Thank, Thank you for coming. You. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Um, so, Mark, uh, you're a. Uh, uh, you've lived in North Reading your whole life. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we had a joke set up there, but you kind of you kind of missed the mark on it. You were supposed to say not yet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mark. So you've lived in North Reading your whole life. You're a business owner, entrepreneur, and you're also the proprietor for Ryers Market, right down in the center of town. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. I got all that right. <laughs> now, um, it, it, how long have you uh, owned Ryers Market? Since '02. 2002, so we're going on 15 years, huh? Yeah. All right. And when you bought Ryers Market, it was the original building, the original store uh, that had been there since day one? Since 1912, from what we understand. 1912. Now, uh, was it the first business in North Reading or one of the, first, or one of the oldest? Uh, one of the oldest, uh, uh, Croswell Funeral Home, has also opened in 1912. So those two businesses have been operational since 1912 till present day yes okay all right now how was it that you got involved uh into in ryer's market because you're by trade you're a contractor you're a builder right, right. yeah all right and so to go take the turn into uh, a store owner uh, how did that come about didn't want it but uh <clears throat> the rumor was honeydew donuts was going to buy the corner and tear down ryer's which yeah. was a country store that i grew up around mm -hmm. and uh, have a lot of memories about so and Bill Ryer offered it to me for a certain amount of money and I turned him down I said no what am I gonna do with a country with a store I'm gonna have to tear it down the buildings junk yeah and then he called back a week later with a better offer an offer you couldn't refuse or kind of thing yeah and uh, so so out of respect for Bill I took it and mm -hmm. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but my aunt was unemployed, so 
she was, she started running it. We cleaned it up, painted it, emptied it out, painted the inside and the outside, and she started running it while she was um, struggling with it. So um, then this woman named Christine Fisher mm -hmm. from England came jogging by one day and said, I can run that store for you. I said, here's the keys, so do with it what you want. And it was a very um, trying times because the road was all dug up for over a year. So we lost a lot of customers in, in the- The center of town, that, that road there was the dug up? Road, yeah. Route 62 was all dug up. Yeah. And uh, so we couldn't, we built the business back up. It had kind of gotten a little bit uh, um, slow in the store before we bought it because Bill was, uh, you know, fading away, getting mm -hmm. out of it and all that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Christine did a great job of bringing it back with flowers, talking to people like the old Rise used to be. Yeah, yeah. You get an insult, a conversation mm -hmm. out of it every day. And I think she had probably about one staff member and that two of them could run the whole store. There was no real food except steamed hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I used to come in when I, I moved <clears> to North Reading in 2004. And, uh, you know, I saw the country store and I, I went down there and Christine was the first person I met. And I thought it was her store because she was so, um, you know, so involved and so inviting. Yeah. And she told me about how you guys had just gotten steak tips and you had to go try some steak tips. You'd, uh, I think you'd, at that time you were selling, I forget what brand, doesn't matter, but they were really good, high quality. So you know, she was very involved in it. She never insulted me. I feel a little bit left out of that, you know, because I, I, that would make you really kind of like part of the town if you'd walk in and someone would insult you. Now, do, do you get insulted in the new Ryers? Not so much, but Bill Ryer, after he sold the store to us, worked there uh, for five years in the mm -hmm. old store mm -hmm. until we changed to the new store. He actually worked at the new store a little bit, but he needed something to do, so he'd come over and run the register and he would do the insulting and the jokes and stuff. <laughs> All right. He's kind of a funny guy. So basically, uh, you're kind of saying like you, 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 you had like a connection to the Ryers uh, from childhood, right? Yeah. And you saw it. I mean, it was, it was just about dead. It was going to be torn down. Now, I never knew that it was going to be replaced by a honeydew donuts. And, um, you know, personally, I, I think what you've done with it is so beautiful. It's such a beautiful, the new building, it's so beautiful, the store inside. Anybody that comes to North Reading and goes to the store always comments on it. And it's a landmark, uh, you know, whenever I tell people I own a business in North Reading and when I tell them, you know, where to go, they go, oh, how far are you from that country store? So everybody knows where it is. Really doesn't, it really doesn't matter where you come from. So you've made a, good, uh, a, a real lasting impression with it. Uh, now, is there, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the present day Ryers? Like, what can we expect in there? Like, what are some things that people don't know you can get at Ryers? Like, we all know you can go get some milk and some water and a sandwich. Is there anything else that maybe somebody might not know that you have there? Well, like any country store up north that you go to, they have just about everything because there's no grocery stores. It, at least there isn't up there. Um, so they have just a little bit of everything. But, mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we wanted to do, even though I was advised by professionals, don't try to be all things to all people. Yeah. But that's what a country store is. So we have our own um, marinated meats. We cryovac them ourselves, tumble them ourselves. They're absolutely delicious. Uh, uh, other meats. We have a full deli. Yeah. We went to Carnegie's in New York City to look and see what they did. Uh, mm -hmm. We studied it pretty good. But there's a hot bar during the day. There's a salad bar. Uh, it's very popular. Yeah. Six different soups in the cold weather and three soups in the um, warmer weather. Mm -hmm. And you can do we can do catering, and um, we sell beer and wine. We got our beer and wine license back in '03 ish. Yeah. Um, and um, we carry exotic stuff. We don't sell 30 packs or singles because the, you know, we don't want that image. So like 30 pack of beer and you can't go get a 40 ounce, right? Or a single. Or a single. That's like right. one bottle. Right? right. And put it in a paper bag and right. walk around the center of North Reading and look like a derelict. Right. All right. So what, Now, um, when you cater, like what could someone expect for catering? Like what kind of, what kind of foods? Um, Ken, the present manager, is uh, a, a graduate of uh, Johnson & Wales and he can do pretty much anything you want. Mm-hmm. Um, but typically it's bites, you know, s small bites and stuff like that um, is what people would order. Yeah. Um, football, 
menu, which has, you know, everything from buffalo wings to sliced cold cut sandwiches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, and we do our MG Hall Christmas party every year with Rise, and they, they'll do anything you want. I was there, and the food was delicious. I enjoyed every bit of it. We use high quality everything in the, in the food. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's just go back a little bit. Let's go back to 2002 when you bought the building, all right? And uh, the building was uh, the condition it was in, all right? Now, you said it was, it was junk. Now, um, junk in the sense that it was just old. To change the use, it would be <clears throat> useless. Yeah. Um, so you had, we, had, we felt as though we had to keep it as a store and just patch it up for now mm -hmm. until we could build a new store. Yep. And uh, so that's what we did. And what year did you build the new store? We opened in 07, September 12th. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful, you, know, you did it in that old style. Like a, now what kind of style would you say that building is? It looks like a, it looks like a farmhouse. Grange Hall. It was supposed to look like a Grange Hall that could add it on to. Yeah. And um, maybe a feed store. The front porch would have been the, de the uh, loading dock type of thing. Yeah. And that was the theme. Yeah, well, but you we did. didn't want to lose the charm of the old store, so we made it, we think, charming. I think you did, yeah. It's yeah. very charming. And the old signs and everything. Yeah. Now, you have a real thing for nostalgia. Yes. Where's that come from? My barn. My barn was full of stuff, so we put it up in rise and showed it off. <laughs> so you're saying the barn you bought, that you live in, the house you live in, yeah. had a barn and it had a bunch of old stuff I in it? I just collect stuff over the years, put it in the barn, and... Finally, it, we found a use for it, and uh, so it's got to be related to North Reading to hang there. Yeah. Except for one clock, which is a pearly burl clock. It's possibly the oldest filling station in the country, they say. In Linfield, and they were they were tearing that down, and mm -hmm. I got the clock out of there. It's that worth. It's worth having. We're so close to, to you know, North Reading. Mm -hmm. It's worth having an out of town sign. Yeah, so that's the exception you made for the oldest filling station. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It really. It, it, I saw they used to have the sign, was, the oldest filling station in, in America. Yeah, there's. If you Google it, it may not say that, but it, that's the rumor. Yep. Um, okay, so tell me something else now. Uh, is it what? What kind of history? Is there any history to North uh, to Ryers? Uh, any interesting history you could add to it? Well, <clears throat> it was a dentist office. Uh, off to the right, when you go in the front door, there's a section that was uh, a dentist office. And Bill Raya tells the story about when the, the B-9 crashed up on Oakdale Road up in, um, near the uh, Eisenhower Pond there. Mm -hmm. Bill was supposed to be at the dentist, and he, was, he saw the plane go down um, when he was supposed to be at the dentist. He, if he was at the dentist, he wouldn't have seen the plane go down. Yeah. And um, what else? Uh, it was also a post office, yeah. that, that section. Yeah. Um, and it had a gas pump out front, one kind of gas. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, there were several corner stores in town. This is obviously the last one. Where were the other corner stores? Like what area do you know? At the bottom of Oakdale Road and Park Street. Yeah. There's one. There was one in, um, up at Martin's Pond where um, Burroughs Road, V is off to the right and turns into Lakeside Boulevard, I think, right at the V. Mm -hmm. There was one there. Um, there's one in every corner, really. Mm -hmm. And this is just the last one. So, like, the general store had all your dry goods, right? Yeah. Uh, y y your meats and stuff like that, too. Would you buy that there at a, at a general store, or was that like... In the day, yeah, yeah. probably, yeah. And then you could also, you know, when the car came around, every general store got a, a, a tank, right, a pump. Yeah. And they'd fill, you could fill your car up, too. Yeah, well, at least yeah. this one, yeah. That one did, yeah. That's interesting. So um, you're an entrepreneur, right? Would you say? Mm -hmm. All right. You've been your whole life an entrepreneur, or is that something that came later? Usually, an entrepreneur is something that's kind of in you, and you kind of, you know, if you get a job, you kind of go away from it. But you've been in the building field, right? Uh, your whole life. Anything else? Yeah. Um, no, just uh, I worked for my father doing sheet metal at summers, and I worked for a guy named Nick Nickerson who taught me restoration of old houses and stuff for summers and uh, after work. Mm -hmm. But then I went off on my own in 1979 when I graduated from the Volk. Yep. 
You graduate, which Vogue did you graduate from? Wakefield. Wakefield Vogue, yeah. And did you take uh, carpentry? or did, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. And so you started your career as a carpenter at that point? Yeah. Working sheet metal wasn't my thing. Everything got buried. You didn't get to see any of the you know, workmanship or anything like that. It's either up on a rooftop or buried in a drop ceiling. Yeah. And I hated it. Yeah. So I started off uh, on my own. Okay, all right. And from there, you know, obviously, you know, we see your signs around, you do some building, you, you uh, own Ryers and everything, which is a, it's not, Ryers isn't just the store. Now, there's some, is there, is there more, uh, there, there's like a, is there a um, there's obstetrician office. upstairs? Yes, there's yep. office space up there. It's actually got a four-stop elevator in it. There's another kitchen in the basement that has not been uh, put online yet. Yeah. Uh, but we got the hood and everything, all the plumbing is in the, in the floor for it. Wait a minute, what, what, what's in the basement? Another kitchen. Another kitchen. And what, what would that be for more catering? It'd be a prep area. Yeah. It, it would be a prep area, ultimately. But yeah. We, we haven't built it out yet. Is that the future? Yes. Oh, okay. So you're going to be a, 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 more in the field of catering? Is that, what, is, is that what I'm to understand with that? Or just more for the store? More for the store. Um, we, we'd like to expand catering, but it's not uh, as simple as that. Yeah. But uh, we do a lot of prepared foods, too, which I didn't mention. Mm -hmm. um, so you can take a plate of food home, heat it up in the microwave after work, and have an inexpensive uh, homemade meal. Yeah, that's a big thing. I think a lot of uh, families in North Reading, uh, both working. I know in my, my case, I work, my wife works. You come home, you want to cook dinner. It'd really be nice to go be able to go somewhere and have some prepared food, some good quality prepared food. Yeah. All right, so we're going, so we're going to be able to uh, look forward to that in the future, right? Yeah. So we can get beer and wine yeah. at Rice, right? Get our lottery tickets. Yeah. All right. We can go there, get a sandwich. Yeah. All right. Uh, we can get breakfast, right? Yeah. All right. Breakfast. Ice cream. Yeah. All right. Um, slush puppies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're famous for that. Coffee. Yeah. Now, you know what you have there that I kind of like? You have a lot of like uh, um, unusual like products. Like you, you have like some potato chips that are not like uh, Frito-Lay. Yeah, I mean, you have that there, but then I noticed you had like some kind of like um, difference in my... Yeah, like gourmet, like yeah. gourmet. Now, where do you get that kind of stuff? I actually don't know. I try not to be, get involved. I don't want to step on the manager's toes. <laughs> so he goes out, he makes his connections, brings in something. You kind of just say, hey, uh, Ken, uh, I'd like this to be a country store. <laughs> and you kind of give him some guidelines and let him run it? I'm the official food taster, so I, I do contact Ken when I like yeah. or dislike something. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So you go in there and you check everything out, see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So any so any so uh, anything else uh, we need to know about Ryers besides go there, get your coffee, do your catering, um, can't, you obviously can't get gas there anymore, but uh, is there anything else that, that the public doesn't know about Ryers? Well, I don't know if they don't know, but it's a meeting and greeting place too. Yeah. People walk up on the porch and you see them supposed with a gallon of milk in their hand just talking to their neighbor who they just bumped into for a while. And people tie their dogs off on the porch, go in and get their groceries done or cold cuts for the week or something like that. And uh, it's a nice place to find out what's the latest in town before the transcript comes out. Mm -hmm. It's always been a gossip type place mm -hmm. where you get information as well as all the other things. Mm -hmm. And on Friday afternoon... You actually, I, I got a big kick out of this. You have a, a doorman that works the door and lets in like uh, six kids at a time. Yeah, he's the bouncer. Yeah. <laughs> the bouncer. You got a bouncer that works the door on Fridays. It's a hot place Friday at about 2.45. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, well, to the kids, it's their rite of passage when they can yeah. go to Rise. It's always been like that, mm -hmm. even in the 60s and the 70s. Mm -hmm. When you could go from school to rise on your own without your parents, yeah, it's a big deal. It is. My uh, my daughter Fiona, when she was in elementary school, um, like once a month, her and her friends would go to Ryers, and they'd go. You know, they'd bring their three dollars and get some candy and a drink and everything. And now she's in the middle school, and they they do that. You know, they do it a little bit more often now. But it's really it is really uh, nice. You know, it's a nice community thing. You go there and there's 20 kids sitting on your circular um, picnic table out yeah, there. Yeah. You know, all having their drinks and talking. And then you go in in the morning and there's some people sitting there having coffee at the tables. Yeah. It is a very, you, you've really done a good job 
uh, you've not done a good job, you've done an excellent job in creating a, a community atmosphere uh, there at Ryers, you know, so I know I appreciate it. And uh, do you think that maybe in a couple of years my daughter could get a job working there? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. We're always looking for good help. Good, good. All right. Because she said she's wanted to kind work. put me on the spot there. I know. I, well, I did that on purpose because <laughs> I want to get her employed, you know, yeah. as soon as possible. No, but since she's been about, oh, maybe five years old, yeah. you know, we'd go in there and get the penny candy. You know, we'd go through, take one to the jar yeah. and you get the little bag. And uh, she used to say she wanted to work there. Yeah. So I told her, I said, I'll tell you what, I know Mark. I said, I'll ask him, see if, uh, see yeah. if he's open to yeah, it. Sure. So. Uh, and so, okay, so we got the go ahead. I mean, I know she's got to be interviewed and everything. It's not just a, it's not just a, just because I know you doesn't mean all you have right. to give her a job. No, they, I just direct her to Ken, the manager. Yeah, all right. Now, uh, let, uh, one more piece of history on Ryers. The Ryers family, all right. How long, well, first of all, are there any Ryers still living in North Reading? And how far back does that family go? Don't, there is no Ryers still living in North Reading. Mm -hmm. um, the family goes back, I guess the grandfather, Bill's grandfather or uncle, actually his uncle opened the store in 1912. Mm -hmm. um, they had ducks out back and everything, hens and ducks, and they sold fresh eggs. But um, Molly took it over shortly after that. Uh, we actually called everybody in town, not everybody, but most local people called it Molly's. Mm -hmm. It always said Raya's store on the on the sign, but um, we called it Molly's because it Molly, it's Molly's store, and she was always at the register. Yeah. I don't re remember her very well because uh, she died in the early '60s. But um, <clears throat> Bill took it over in 1956, and we still called it Molly's. Um, so the actual corporate name is Molly's Store Inc. Mm -hmm. And uh, but Bill was thrilled when we renamed it or kept the name Raya's store. Yeah. He's really thrilled because he lived across the street and he said, oh, I just look across the street in the morning. I know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's uh, that's some of the history about, about it. But yeah. Bill was an accountant for SEAL test and he went to college for that. And then um, he took over the store, like I say, in 1956 from Molly. And Molly lived upstairs. Um, and uh, we actually have her a clawfoot tub that she, uh, that she used to bathe in. We, we put it out full of flowers one year, but then when the snow came, we had no place to push the snow onto the patio, so we moved it. But And we have a Molly's rope rope bed, too. It's actually at the uh, Sergeant Flint house upstairs on loan. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen yeah. that, yeah. Uh, you do, are you involved a lot with uh, the historical uh, society yeah. uh, in North Reading? Not necessarily the society, but... Yeah, the Minutemen and um, the Society. I am involved with them a little bit. I'm not. A, I am a member, but not a not a voting member. You know, is your dad? Is your dad uh, a, a member? No. No. You guys just participate in all the events, all right? Right. Well, the Minutemen do the um, buildings down back there. They yeah. they created last year. We did the farm museum. Mm. They made that museum. That was really nice. That is really my, nice. Yeah. My father wanted that to be a place to see what you know that this was a farming community at one time mm -hmm. and uh what people don't might not know about north reading you know when they come here but uh and then the sergeant flint house was the first structure in town we we believe mm -hmm. so they recreated that and the schoolhouse was the first piece down there and that was actually where eastgate liquors is now and that was a they converted that into a uh, automotive garage and uh, so that was going to be torn down to build Eastgate. The schoolhouse was a, they had made it into a garage. Yeah. And people were working on cars on there. Right. Really? Yeah. So the men and men got together and they re, they dismantled it back in the very early 90s, 92, I'll say. And I wasn't involved then, but, um, and they stored it underneath the Putnam House barn for years. Yeah. Uh, not, no, not underneath the barn. That was the Sergeant Flynn House. But uh, the schoolhouse, they, they took it down wall by wall, not piece by piece. Yeah. And they stacked it up, and they eventually put the walls back up, and now they got the schoolhouse. Which is wonderful. I mean, it, it looks like that, that you go inside, and it feels like it's always been there. Yeah. They did a fantastic job on that. 
Yeah. You know, every, uh, every I think it's every third grade class, yeah. they have a field trip and they go over there yeah. and uh, they, they have like, the, they ring the bell as they're yeah. coming down, you know, yeah. and they go through the whole historic district down there, but yeah. they go and sit in the chairs and everything and they have like a, they light the pot belly stove so it's warm in there so it feels like it, it did when, you know, uh, probably what a hundred years ago, maybe 150 years ago. Yeah. Or the kids went to school there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly, but it's really well done. Um, now the old Ryers building, you saved the structure. Right. I saved the main post and beam part of it. Yeah. And that's sitting uh, what maybe a hundred feet from Ryers uh, on on uh, Haverhill Street, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, if you ever, if, if if no one's ever got a chance to see the Ryers building, you can go by and see it. And maybe in the future, uh, might see something there, possibly. Yeah, in the future, we plan to put a um, ice cream stand out there. Yeah. And um, and have uh, picnic tables and stuff. Oh, that would be really nice. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Because the, the ice cream one, we had it in the uh, little store. We mm -hmm. call it the little store. It was a it was a big hit. It was, you could drive your car right up to the window and. Yes. And um, get out and walk a short distance to the windows, kind of like a miniature Richardson's ice cream. Mm -hmm. And um, that was real successful. People enjoyed it. We had two picnic tables out in the parking lot, and it was really good. And we, when we did the new store, we lost that, that uh, feel in that um, business. And uh, For the ice cream. For the ice cream. Yeah. We still have the small ice cream window, but it just doesn't work. People yeah. come in to get it, and people... The guys or girls are working in the at the grill, and they got to stop and get the. Ice. It's just not working. But if we yeah. did a separate ice cream store over there with a museum mm -hmm. section to it, which will look just like what it used to look like when you walk in Raya's, yeah, um, that would be kind of fun. Yeah, that'd be great. People do love that walk up thing for ice cream. I don't know what it is. It's probably something to do with uh, the summertime and stuff. But, yeah. Uh, in New England, ice cream is a home run year round, so people. Uh, you still see them lined up at Richardson's up in Middleton too, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the winter time. So that's uh, well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll see that soon. You know, I want to thank you first of all for being on my show. I really appreciate it You're taking welcome. the time. I know you got a lot of things to do, but you took the time to come here. And uh, I also want to thank you for all you do for the community because you really do a lot, uh, and you you make North Reading uh, a much better place every day with the things you do. Uh, we love Ryers Market. Uh, I don't I don't think I have to. I think anybody will agree with me on that. We all love the store, and we appreciate what you're doing. So thanks for being on the show. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, well, thank you for watching the Matt Lagore Show. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next episode that will be real soon. And special thanks to Mark Hall and the Ryers Market. You can check it also out at ryersstore.com. See you next time.